is melting the wax away. I'm locked. Sergeant Ashraf Naim has a daunting task to teach Gaza's troublesome donkey cart drivers and unruly motorists a bit of manners. Cooperate with us, he tells a drone. This is the executive force, a militia formed by Hamas, now effectively the local police force. In recent years, Gaza became synonymous with chaos, a place where respect for the law was optional. Now, that's set to change. <laughs> Sergeant Ashraf explains to watermelon vendors to move their goods off the road. <laughs> I'm writing this down in my book, he says. You need to do it today. When I come back later, I want all of this out of here. Vendor Nidal Abbas tells me he's happy to obey the new sheriff in town. Before there was no security, he says. Now, thank God, there is, and we're happy. In America, it's donuts. In Gaza, a cup of coffee helps win over the cops. This is law and order in the new Gaza. Men who a week ago were busy in battle are now trying to remind the people of this city of long forgotten traffic rules. And in a place where guns, and lots of them, were regularly paraded and fired in the streets, these men say they're trying to change old ways. We have orders to stop and arrest anyone with weapons in the street who's not a policeman says Sergeant Ashraf. But this is the easy part. A terrorist organization in the eyes of the United States and Israel, Hamas now has to organize life for the 1.5 million people living here. Which means Hamas will have to ensure institutions like Gaza's Shifa Hospital has enough supplies, that the equipment works, and that new nurses get trained. Doctors here say they have enough medicine and machines for now, but worry supplies could be cut. Gaza is still under an international embargo, boycotted by almost every nation on earth. And a few well-armed traffic cops do not make a viable government. Ben Wiedemann, CNN, Gaza.